praise lord my dear brothers and sisters warm welcome to one and all of you and from the bottom of my heart i want to thank you for taking time and staying tuned uh, through these online sessions that we are connecting and each time i get into these kind of sessions it it, it gives me a great feeling as if i'm sitting there right next to you or <laughs> something like that you know i take it very personally and that's what you know keeps me going and i i feel all the more encouraged to be part of uh, these sessions or do it dedicating my time and efforts i'm a part time minister i hope you are all praying for me please remember me in your prayers always all right so we are in the business or process of discussing from the book of mark <clears throat> chapter 1 verses 21 to 28 that is jesus is casting out an unclean spirit and this discussion this discussion is to it's like a character study from the life of jesus the more we learn um through the character of jesus through his attitude through his behavioral pattern and yeah he's like a university you just get through him in and through him and come out you will become like him but for that it may take some 30 years <laughs> i was just joking if you have the desire you will be able to learn but it's not going to be quick i i can assure you that right many people are like that instant coffee people hmm? they they take water baptism ah here am i like jesus no you won't become like jesus <laughs> immediately okay probably you will be you will be, you will be you will be little cleaner because you just went through that you know water baptism bath and but inside of you probably it is the same but it's a good beginning beloved that's a good decision that you have taken and the new chapter is opening up in your life which is really good welcome news this is exactly what heaven wants from you what our god the father is expecting out of you okay so this is our third session and this this is a very short series and we are not going to span with too many sessions but we will see how it goes oh brother this is what you see you say each time but because some people have <clears throat> given me a very sarcastic comment in a very jovial way not not, not to hurt my feelings because uh, i ended up speaking 85 plus sessions in one series spiritual composition of human heart body mind spirit and soul and actually my intention was to talk through the various different forms of heart human heart such as fragile heart uh, you know, what is a panicking heart and worrying heart and fearful heart and envying heart and all that right so i thought i will do this pre session before i get into that heart topic let me talk about this body mind spirit and soul the spiritual composition and i spoke about these four nomenclatures i i thought one or two sessions more than enough let's just set the basics and then we get into heart people understand you know little better just to help the listeners i ended up speaking for five sessions then it became 10 <laughs> and it became 20 and 25 and 30 and 50 and 85 87 or something like that now and i i am not even 20% done so if i were to do that my entire life span would go and that's why i just suspended there for some time and i came here to do these kind of topics because we need to cover the entire bible and trust me that series is about the entire bible we are taking you through old testament new testament ecclesiastes proverbs psalms or we are not sparing anything i am touching almost every single book and we are we are discussing in detail as always none of our sessions are something very brief or we do it for the sake of numbers nothing like that we get into the details it's called as meditation it's bible teaching similarly we kicked off this i i hope so it's short series but i don't care it's a longer shot <laughs> doesn't matter but i'm going to talk as long as my holy spirit wants me to talk and he is complete he is in complete control he is the one who is talking and i am surrendering my body mind spirit and soul into his hands that's it he is my boss yeah he calls me as his friend but i call him as my boss i have that respect i have that reverence i have that 
honor i have that affection intimacy i love him i cannot i cannot survive on this earth without him perhaps i can survive without him in heaven he is made for us to live our lives victoriously successfully ah uh, joyfully he was he was sent for this purpose that we all have to live on our lives uh, in this manner on earth why because this world is been ruled by the devil and 1 john 4 4 great is he within me who will fight against who will help me to fight against the wiles of the devil many people have this misconception holy spirit himself is going to take that weapon and he is going to swing the head of my head of the satan or at my adversary actually holy spirit won't do anything he will admonish you he will advise you he will encourage you he will he will uh, he will real he will help you to realize that you are powerful you are created in the image of god and for which your lifestyle must change your thought process must change your attitude must change you need to revisit your spiritual values doctrines and uh, the spiritual principles <clears throat> and check with the scriptures how much of it is matching what is inside of you is matching with the scriptures that you are studying every day and whoever ignores this concept right they don't grow uh, in in their in their in their spiritual life and you will see them they are also stagnant in their materialistic or some people um, they they become super rich they buy too many cars and too many houses and all that but they will be hanging a cross around their neck but then no way they will be able to justify that way that they walk according to the teachings and preachings of Jesus all right um we kicked off the series to talk about many many things as we are discussing in detail from this book of mark chapter 121 to 28 each session we are discovering new um perspectives right and it's and and thanks to the holy spirit who's shedding more light and he adds more flavor it's getting really tasty you know mouth watering <laughs> when i think of uh, certain fruits or when i think of certain food for example in this hot mutton biryani i love it see my mouth waters you are not able to see it but i can feel it similarly there are certain subjects in the gospel and it will be mouth watering oh my goodness i get all excited one such topic is to fight against the wiles of the devil i love it i don't welcome it it's not that i'm a trouble maker to the demonic host but when they come for trouble come let's meet ha huh? i'm ready for it <laughs> i'm not running around see some christians know they go oh, they they overreact and they go over and beyond i devil where are you come on i'm waiting for you man <laughs> why you want to uh, do all this gimmicks and you know you don't have to overreact beloved but then when the devil is coming of course he is always roaming around you yes because that's his only job that is a saying right you see the stray dogs you cannot spot stray dogs in europe or us or somewhere but in india all that you will spot is stray dogs so uh, we know we are we are mastered in the behavior of the stray dogs and there is a beautiful saying it comes well in tamil my mother tongue uh, but i don't know how to translate it you observe the pattern of this dog you will understand couple of principles dogs are very busy but they have nothing to accomplish <laughs> you will see them instantaneously rising up they'll be in the middle of deep sleep suddenly they'll be rising up and they'll be barking and they'll be running with such a rapid uh, you know speed fast pace and they will go there and they will lie down at that place <laughs> they'll they'll continue the sleep right they're very cute animals i love them uh, all animals i love god's creations all of god's creations i love no two ways about it um but this is uh, th- this is the uh, not a uh, stray dog's character and this is nothing but devil's character he will be moving around moving around would not would not have something to bark about would not have something to uh, you know bite about backbiter gossiper complainer murmurer have you seen them they will match up to this principle yeah they are very busy but they have nothing to accomplish they are called as who uh, who are they one one first category belongs to stray dogs second is 
devil can be compared to that those stray dogs character and they inherit that principle who are the third people there are few believers here i'm not talking about non believers unbelievers uh, who have not accepted christ i pity them i love them i pray for them yeah always with burden in my heart but i don't condemn or judge them because they have not understood the gospel they have not come to light but i am talking about my fellow believers in christ and my sisters in christ what do you do huh you gossip huh? you complain and you all gang up against that one sister i am not saying that sister is righteous but who are you hmm? all of us are same before the throne of grace and we have not been given that authority to look down on anyone and we are interestingly discussing about authority as a subject right we spoke about that in our previous lesson i hope you listened up uh, and tuned up and you have listened to the entire session yeah you have been not given that authority who gave you that permission who gave you those powers who gave you that liberty who gave you that authority oh, to look down and who are you you are so busy and bible calls you since you are human beings or we are human beings created in god's image bible calls us respectfully as busy bodies but if we expand the busy body and you want to define can somebody rise up and speak out on this definition of busy body you will exactly call out this principle busy bodies are nothing but like straight nothing but stray dogs who run for something and keep themselves busy but they accomplish nothing that's the definition of busy bodies one of the epistles paul mentions that and he gives us a command commandment that do not be busy bodies but rather you shall work and those who shall not work they shall not eat these are some of the commandments that uh, holy spirit had given to all of us through apostle paul yes so when you get, get involved in these kind of busy body business and gossiping business complaining business uh fighting and quarreling and getting into disputes and contradictions against each other believers do all of these in the church they go to church for this purpose many people are in, the, in this business who are you 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 are demon possessed obviously without a doubt because why these are all the characteristic features of mr lucifer and his demonic hosts and you behave like them then who are you you are you are one of those unfortunately why because the ruler of the earth is ruling you and your behavior your attitude your time and who's having authority on you not god not the holy spirit not even you and you know what god definitely has authority over you but then he gave that authority that liberal liberalization or that liberty in your hands yeah you inherit my authority and you govern everything i will partner with you you come for help then i will guide you you want any protection or guidance you come to me holy spirit is anyway living inside of you our god is not who somebody bosses over people and who asks multiple questions hey why did you do this and all that and why did you go there why not there why here no he doesn't ask any why is how where's what's who's no but instead you ask all these questions to yourself with that authority given to you what authority authority to fight against the wiles of the devil and also authority never look at it as like a military language you have been given that authority to love others forgive others yeah and that authority proceeds from the kingdom of heaven and that's called as righteousness of god instilled in us we become like god or we become like god and our character is transformed like god you talk like god you behave like god you think like god you react like god you speak like god you walk like god now don't get up and walk and show like like, like that movie actor no nobody has seen god walking but i'm telling you walking means not like that stylish walking and cat walk it's walking in the path of the righteousness how beautiful are the feet of the people who preach the gospel bible says beautiful feet in the sense what wherever they go they bring light and bible talks about that organ which authoritatively transport you to a certain place that is the feet hands heart mind and uh, you know mouth and eyes or the organs proverbs 
uh, speaks about and every single day you need to speak for these organs why because the authority of god is either transported or is either emitted or is either executed through one of these organs yeah execution of god's authority happens travels through your mouth yeah you speak the word word is might you speak the promises of god it doesn't return back to void same same applies you speak some curses it returns back to you with condemnation and judgment watch out yeah all right we had been discussing from mark 1 21 22 then they went into capernaum and immediately on the sabbath we spoke a little bit about sabbath in our previous session i won't get in there and and the laws of sabbath are really big huge and i am not getting in there because it's a separate series i plan for it but i will kick off when 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 god permits me on the sabbath he entered a synagogue and taught jesus entered a synagogue and taught and they were astonished who all the believers right sitting there all the jewish folks they were astonished astonished is the extremity of surprise ex surprise surprise to the power of n right you can't even um explain how surprised and shocked you know looking at him how well he has grown how tall he has grown how big a mush he has and all that right? you get astonished they were astonished at his teaching why two reasons number one they have always seen this guy jesus from that little boy as carpenter's son how did this guy get this kind of knowledge we have not seen him attending uh syn- not synagogues you know getting to bible colleges theological study like paul went there right if paul were to talk like a scholar nobody is going to be astonished because they know the guy dedicated his life for that he was born and brought up in that kind of uh, tradition and culture therefore no big deal ha huh? why oh, you got to know only now i know paul from his birth this guy always a fanatic man religious fanatic he always went to this gamaliel university he would stay there he would he would he would he would uh, lodge there and uh, he was like almost uh, gamaliel's right hand and uh, we have seen him you don't you know which world you are living something like that right if but that reaction is not the reaction of astonishment where is this jesus from birth they are seeing for two reasons i am telling you these people were astonished number one is carpenter's son not involved in any kind of theological studies bible college and did not go to universities and yeah there were also school of prophets which was started by elijah yeah and that was also continuing he was not part of that as well but he is also he is a prophet he is a teacher he is a scholar and he is for us to ascribe he is ascribed to a sadhusi he is a sadhusi uh of course he contradicts with sadhusis and pharisees but he is no way inferior as much as they know he knows more than them how did he outbeat and that's where you know many people who are in the mainline churches and the traditional churches they have not understood the concept of spirit and that's why my catholic friends please listen to that spiritual composition series you will understand jesus is no way greater than you or you are no way greater than jesus you, we are just the same but jesus had worked hard with all sincere efforts and uh, loyalty in his heart he sought the father and he was given those gifts he was blessed with those powers and gifts and that's why jesus says you also can definitely receive such gifts and without a doubt you will become like me indeed you can do things more than i have done how many of us don't want to believe if you have made a choice not to believe then yeah nothing can be done yeah uh, how many of you are hearing this for the first time and then still you are in the mode of astonishment like how these guys were astonished right there is nothing to be astonished why because you have not read the scriptures properly he was tempted like you and me at all points yet jesus overcame and that also tells me reminds me of the fact that he would have definitely gone through certain sicknesses and diseases anyone in this room not able to believe that jesus also got some allergic problems and he also had that normal fevers and little bit of that stomach problems gastritis and stuff like that of course he would have got but he overcame by prayer by faith yeah and the tempter was at work 
against him everywhere he deployed his agents in the form of pharisees in the form of sadducees in the form of other people you know heathens and they were all hurling blows at him he is devil possessed by devil and jewish priests were against him but jesus overcame like you and me and that's why he says you will be able to overcome just like how i have overcome because before jesus was sent nobody paid attention to what the prophet spoke why because those were remaining as theological studies theoretical studies practically it was not implemented yeah they always thought god is like that sadistic god what for him let him come and live then he will know he heard many people talking like that that that's why he made a decision of course god is aware that these this is how the people will treat him this is how people will insult him that's why he spoke as early as genesis 3:15 i am going to come taking that same form of blood and flesh i am going to live in the midst of you in the same world where mr lucifer is ruling he's been allowed to rule and i will live like you but my standards of belief and faith etc will be at a different level not that it was given to me from heavens but i acquired it from heaven i acquired it from the kingdom of heaven through the to to to, to ex- in the uh, through exercising my faith and belief and uh i've been loyal in prayer that's why jesus gave utter importance to prayer prayer life every time he would separate himself to pray praying and praying and acquiring yet he was the very busiest person some people oh i have to go to prayer and all that all they always spend time in prayer and they become sluggish they don't work and uh, they send their wives to work and they spend time jolly good time and uh, they call it as prayer time and all that no jesus was the most busiest person yet he was the busiest person in prayer life too whereas these fellows have never understood the principles that he practiced the doctrines by which he lived he did not he not just taught the doctrines but he lived by the doctrines in other words he taught the doctrines in which he already lived it's not that he's going to live that's why he he condemned the pharisees hey he, you don't you don't live by what you preach or what you teach why are you burdening my people why are you you know uh, you know casting that yoke on my people but jesus was a very practical person he did not teach or preach anything that is unrealistic everything that was possible for the mankind to achieve and inherit for which they need grace for which they need mercy for which they need holy spirit the helper the special helper for which they need guardian angels assured everything given jesus had any all of these yes but he never used the powers given to him the supernatural gifts given to him for his own self but he used it to bless people deliver people free people from the bondage of sicknesses and from uh, to free them from the wiles of the devil and the demonic forces that's that that one such thing we are listen, we are reading now right what we are meditating is the freedom which jesus has given to a person who had been possessed with unclean spirit but we are not getting there my intention is not to drag but my intention is to preach and teach in a slow pace otherwise you are not going to understand it will become just a dialogue or sometimes monologue i'm i'm i'll be talking you will be remaining wherever you are that's why i am i'm just getting part of you this is the way how jesus spoke jesus taught yeah he becomes one among them and then he starts to speak as if he is also part of that crowd he doesn't talk like a teacher you're all my students nothing like that yeah that then it becomes a meaningful discussion meaningful meditation that's why many people have appreciated and you know many people <laughs> were also astonished brother i have never heard you i never knew you knew all of this yeah brother same thing happened to jesus please come we will see what happened to jesus for my first reason they were astonished because they thought it this guy was carpenter's son man that's why they called him somebody uh, is ruling over you and he is demon possessed because these are all like supernatural way of reacting and uh, demon demons are falling down on his feet and the way how he teaches the way how he speaks to the nature storm uh, storm be calm he says peace be still he says immediately storm runs away 
all were astonished who is this guy and that's why i'm telling you people who don't read the bible properly they say that a son of god no he's been packaged with all the supernatural god himself coming down what man it's no big deal of course tom will obey of course he is able to walk on the water of course the demons will tremble because he is god no no he is son of god who took the form of blood and flesh like you and me he came down he lived that life in humility and you want to have better understanding go through the truth about the cross here is i by the grace of god i have beautifully explained there what it took for jesus to be born in this world and how he was brought up and what all happened in the 30 years of span uh, 30 year span of life and um, yeah how much of sacrifices he had to go through and then after also he never gave up on this mankind and he was all excited to serve them help them be a, be their servant that's why he spoke from the on the, on the in the truth about the cross series that the topic of servanthood jesus took the form form of servanthood and we compared with the life of david moses and uh, like the, joseph these these are all called as deliverers all they were deliverers yeah and and you need to go through such discussions only then you will understand but these guys never had gone through such discussions therefore i am not astonished hearing the way how they were astonished looking at the way how jesus taught jesus spoke carpenter's son that means something is possessed him man something has possessed him this guy is not normal ah huh? something is wrong they were not able to believe neither ignore yeah because they were in a confused state because they have not seen this guy anywhere like this and but there are few people whenever he visited the temple who always got reminded the way how he spoke to the pharisees and the sadducees and all these guys yeah the way how he spoke at the age of 12 they always you know got reminded about it there were also few people who lived as witnesses second important reason is this person is called as illegitimate child because see these days the population is too much and people are all delo i would say i would say dislocated right in the sense um because of their profession because of the marriages and stuff like that they don't continue to stay in the same place where they were born and brought up but that was not the condition those days they were all born and brought up they almost know everybody existing or everyone they know by name they know by nature they know by character also they talk to them hey you know this family they will they will they will start to list up all the names in that family all the 50 guys which guy man i uh, no no that that guy of the same, uh, there are two people of the same name which guy you are talking tall guy huh? who is little fat ha huh? Uh, he always you know is very angry short tempered and all that that guy so much they know the details so the all the neighboring towns and villages they definitely know how jesus was given birth nobody believes that he was born of the holy spirit because they thought mary had an affair with somebody and joseph was a very kind and compassionate person he didn't want mary to be stoned to death and he was very compassionate and he loved her and therefore he saved her and he accepted her and they both had many children after that and they appreciate joseph but not mary they always looked at mary as an adulterer adulterous women sorry yeah and imagine the condition of mary right that's why jesus during his last moments he he knows that he's he was aware that he's going to be gone before he said it is finished he calls mother mary and he says look at that compassion right because he knows personally how much she struggled and what a kind of social stigma she became to the society and mary also gone through a lot of uh, you know brutal harassments i'm sure all these ladies they all go together to fetch water and all that right that's why the samaritan women she prefers to go alone because why all this lady will be nagging bullying them and sarcastically they will be insulting hurts and uh, sorry blowing uh, hurling blows and uh, instilling hurts and all that she doesn't want that's why she picks a odd time in the mid of the noon she goes to fetch water similarly i think mary always lived a isolated life and she doesn't want 
to hear all of these gossips and she lived with her family and and this jose this uh, jesus was looked at as that illegitimate child and he was not born for joseph and mary but mary had some other affair maybe you know some some roman soldier came and raped her or something like that you know those days rapes were quite 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 popular and nobody can question these roman soldiers and and this is history this is not my imagination yeah this is this is how it is believed even among many of the jewish folks today why because they don't believe in jesus neither in mary neither in the birth of jesus the supernatural birth and these two reasons now you understand one word has so much of meaning read bible this way right just, just get stuck to one one word and please be convinced when you read the word of god and they were astonished at his teaching for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes now what is the thin line of difference between this one having authority versus scribes not as scribes that means what scribes are so ordinary yeah? no they are not ordinary people they are scholars they are phd's and they have been given uh, such a great opportunity in the synagogues and all that and they are the one who research the bible research the scriptures and it's because of those scribes you have this kind of translation not without the help of the scribes this bible was translated trust me yeah, yeah i would i wouldn't call it as translated this bible was compiled into this kind of format right the scriptures the scriptures and the scrolls scriptures were in the form of scrolls and the scrolls were all you know hidden in some caves and they took it over and then they they all they, you know the scribes all ganged up and they then compiled it into a biblical format and not without their help all of these happened and that's why it's very important that all of us pay attention to what bible says okay and these scribes are not ordinary people that's my whole point and they are very very intellectual they they have they have they are almost like scientists lot of reasoning skills analytic skills lot of intellectuals by the time you finish thinking through some subject or topic these guys would have gone far ahead and they would already have some 100 questions for you and they would have the answers also for those very intellectual amazing there are certain students uh, when i was doing my college and schooling and all that some guys know uh, they they seem to be like ordinary but when the teacher completes half the equation and he challenges hey who in this room can come and finish the remaining half for example pythagoras theorem and stuff like that because only i know only that theorem <laughs> i'm not i'm not a great mathematician sorry to say this <laughs> yeah uh, and i don't like to be one i want to be grounded and rooted in the word of god and i love doing that so uh those guys would casually you know jump out out of their seats and they would go to the board and oh my goodness they write all this big long equation stand theta square beta all this nonsense they write up and they just come and casually sit on their uh, in the, uh, the, these are all like supernatural abilities the way how i look at things oh my goodness and the, the teacher himself will be astonished he is stuck with this word astonished right <laughs> and he would be questioning by what authority this guy is able to complete <laughs> yeah today the world would be astonished looking at your lifestyle the way how you behave the way how you live your life as a good testimony yeah and they are not able to live their life in purity in faith in love for others 1 timothy 4:12 and that's why they are astonished by what authority this guy is able to behave like this or talk like this yeah the scribes are no ordinary guys but then there is a thin line of dis, uh, you know um difference as one having authority the scribes are going to be submissive to the high priests there is a hierarchy they have a high command of authority political parties also right they have a high command sitting somewhere in delhi 
and based on their decision only this guy will be saying a yes as a yes or a no as a no otherwise he is not allowed he may be super intellectual doesn't mean this guy doesn't have brains that's why he won the elections and became chief minister but still the high command that party command authority who sits there they will be the one who will be reviewing the situation and they will decide what you are supposed to do and this guy will have to come and nod his head according to the high command authority this was the hierarchy in the synagogue or sanhedrin right this was the hierarchy and they cannot violate the hierarchy if they violate the hierarchy it becomes an offense they can be even stoned to death by law so they are very careful that they don't take the authority in their hands they always need to see if they want to teach anything outside the scriptures i'm taking a very practical and a simple example try to focus and understand this you will be able to be on my side and we both will be on god's side come let's discuss this right if they want to teach something outside the gods outside the scriptures for example whatever jeremiah had told or isaiah had told they want to narrate it to the people with more examples for example through parables how jesus taught why one shouldn't be wasting his talent he picked up the parable of talent and he speaks beautifully you know in a town there was a ruler and he had few servants and each one of them he called and he gave some to five and sorry five to some and three to uh, some some and two two talents to one and Uh, one uh, uh, and one talent to the other guy and you saw how and when went for a far away journey distance yeah and then when he comes back he whatever you know that parable right he teaches two things the principles that we extract is we cannot waste our time we cannot waste our talent we cannot stay away from the divine will and plan of god and um, we cannot act shrewdly before god and god will be also teaching you certain lessons like that fellow who said that you gave me the talent but i buried it and kept it safe what is a big deal can there be any one who is so stupid that you know that he is a very shrew, very very not a shrewd master very strict and righteous god he is he is a just god and there is no way you could fool him by speaking all of these yet he is trying to fool our lord jesus and he said you wicked fellow come here this is the language he uses i will catch you from your own words and he was thrown into the no, lake of fire that's what it says into the dungeon where there was gnashing of teeth probably you call it as place of torment hell hmm? because after white throne judgment is when the lake of fire i mean just before the white throne judgment lake of fire gets triggered and the false prophets and demons were thrown uh yeah and uh, the, you read from revelation 20 so it's compared to the place of torment so what happens here Jesus didn't never ask for any permission from this high priest right or the bunch of scholars scribes and pharisees and rabbis there are a lot of rabbis and when people called him rabbi not by graduation but by the way how he spoke with authority can you believe that's why i am not a great believer in going to bible colleges i converted my home office my private room itself is like a bible college okay then brother tell us how many books did you buy what all materials did you refer did you consult this person or did you listen you will be shocked and god is my witness i stuck to only one book and the name of the book is holy gospel and the version that i had been grounded and rooted is kjv king james version you can come to my house anytime you're welcome and you can check my private room I don't even have NIV versions, BSI versions, and all that. I refer it in Google. What NIV is saying, what BSI is saying, right? What the uh, Study Bible is saying. Of course, um, my wife is really, really a person who is versatile, and and I, I really admire her reading skills. She has got all those books. maybe 20 bibles or 25 bibles she has <laughs> all nivs and everything she would have student bible and study bible and reference bible and this bible and that bible and um, i i admire her skills how are you able to read and if i ask her something she will tell me you know no this is not exactly that and then she will be 
taking that bible and referring and all that and i generally don't get into the discussion rather i go to the holy Sp holy spirit rather than going to my wife because i have been taught that way by my holy spirit he says you come to me why are you going there couple of times he was very upset with me <laughs> we do have lot of personal flap fights you know we are good friends we also fight friendly hmm. and then i said see see don't don't feel don't feel uh, bad okay i i just went and i stopped going to anyone i go to him how long 25 plus years what all books you read one book how many times you read read i do not know but yearly i know definitely i read it at least once minimum right so now you do all your math i'm just telling you right this is how did i how did i how did i become like this and why did i become like this because my jesus lived his life in this way therefore i'm not against those who go to bible colleges and get that graduation please god bless you i'm not against you i'm not against don't get me wrong theological studies god bless you please go there yeah but why don't i hear these kind of messages in detail from a theologian or from a guy who graduated out of bible college i have heard some of the boring messages from these guys who come from such institutes why because they had been taught to speak that way they are confined within certain mechanism of uh, thoughts and uh, yeah they they are from that old school and they are bound to certain doctrines or certain rules and regulations and and they just cannot go outside even if they are willing even if they would be getting super thoughts and all that given in blessed by god and with various you know interesting illustrations and examples they are not allowed and this i had understood only after some time but even otherwise my holy spirit kept me busy with so many thoughts and i would not have time to answer my own questions then where is the time to go and enroll but i always had the intention trust me i tried doing that uh, exam once what exam i forgot that name i got i enrolled uh, up for the theological study just to learn bible in detail and you know what how long i went there 10 days i called it as a waste of time that's why good that i don't remember the exam name so forget it otherwise i would be insulting those people my intention is not to insult or hurt anybody don't get me wrong right 10 days i counted as a waste of time because they were discussing how many times paul was shipwrecked where all he was where he went through that shipwrecked experiences how many times he was bet it's by bible is telling clearly no 195 times he was bet that means what five times more than our lord jesus was bet he had gone through that's why jesus told ananias that um um uh, yeah uh, that uh, i will teach him how much he will have to suffer for my name sake and god executed that and he fulfilled that promise <laughs> which he gave for paul but they were discussing on this for almost like two three classes and they will be conducting some exams one word exam and uh choices and etc don't you think this is amazing to learn <laughs> right um how this simple authority is something that plays a key role yeah in our christian walk but then if you look at look at it closely right it's not simple authority it is by authority you can do all things and that's the reason um each time these uh, pharisees and the high priests and all they will question jesus if you notice and see from the book of matthew mark luke and john by what authority are you preaching and teaching like this see here it's a different context they are saying as they were astonished at his teaching and he taught them at, as one having authority and not as the scribes because the scribes are in the second level the first level is it's the uh, you know the scribes pharisees sadducees are all in the same level actually but they are different sections right they have the different emphasis and above them they there are there are uh, the chief high priests and the high priests who basically take take the call and they basically uh, put in the curriculum and they say these are the rules and you just cannot get outside of this you can uh, you can you can uh, you know cross, you cannot cross this boundary and you have to stipulate your uh, preachings and teachings within these uh, uh, you know boundaries and stuff like that they are the ones who will 
who are like dictators right and they cannot violate it and if they violate there are going to be question what by what authority you have done it right you cannot take authority you cannot take the law in your hands in other words you are the law maker by if you are living in a country you are where foreign land or your own native land you have to walk by the law of that land yeah and uh, if you are going to be justified and judged as a violator according to the law of that land then obviously you deserve for punishment because why you have offended the law and uh, the law makers are going to come in search of you and they are going to uh, you know punish you or condemn you according to the law yeah if you violate the law this is the condemnation this is the punishment and therefore you are going to be judged similarly they also had that kind of law temple law right and you have to teach and preach only within those boundaries and jesus went much much higher than those laws and he called himself as son of god and i have the son of man had got authority and powers to even forgive the sins and your sins are forgiven these guys all get worked up they are going insane man mad about it they they have gone berserk with their teaching and preaching and also with certain statements from jesus completely contradicting how dare he calls himself as son of god and who can forgive sins if not for god who else can forgive sin he was just a carpenter son they also do that inquiry right and they found out like how these fellows have found Uh, of course the high priest and all everybody would have inquired and this is the carpenter guy and how dare he has not even gone to the theological studies in bible college and he is not even a graduate neither is he from the school of the prophets and how dare he make such a statement blaspheme that he is equating himself with this, with god and calling himself i came from heaven and you knew not from where i came and all that blaspheme blaspheme they were all getting worked up and burning in anger but jesus says look at my works if you don't trust, trust in my preaching and teaching look at my works and at least believe that i have been given that authority and those who shall call upon my name and those who shall follow my footprints and those who shall live by the doctrines what i preach and teach and believe in the name of jesus partake in my body broken body and the blood then you will be given the same level of authority in which you will also do those miracles you will also be able to bind every demonic weapon that are formed against you no weapon formed against you shall prosper no principalities and powers of darkness shall lift its head you will crush the head of the satan right under your feet all this authority will be given which the old covenant people have never enjoyed yes you are right according to the old covenant standards according to the old testament standards yes these are the things which doesn't exist neither anybody has authority to preach or teach or anybody has even any imagination to think of these these level of authority these boundaries of authority or exceeding the boundaries of the new testament laws and commandments but i have come here not abolish the old covenant but to accomplish it fulfill it and then elevate it to the next standard or next level therefore you are going to grow spiritually you will be overcomers you will never have to live this defeated life you will never have to be scared of the devils uh, the demons and the wiles of the devil yeah this is the new doctrine and this is the reason messiah had been sent therefore you can say goodbye to your defeated life and therefore you can welcome this new victorious life with the arms wide open and don't you think this is the reason why the messiah was delayed to be sent for 4000 years therefore you guys realize enough that is that there is no way for you to uh, you know escape not not just the judgment but then this defeated life it's that it's not everybody wants to sin willingly but it's because of the deception it's because of the misconceptions the weakness of flesh takes a troll it goes on the better side a higher side compared versus the spirit and that's why the flesh wages war against the spirit each time and why are you not able to overcome because you are not able to understand this new authority yes this new blessing that's been given into your hands but you are stuck to the old covenant standards like sabbath law of the sabbath and law of sin offering i am that sin offering i have been sent as that sin offering no more bulls no more pigeons no more sh- lamb nothing is needed to be sacrificed i myself is going to take the place of every single animal every single sinful 
person's place I'm going to take. That's why Matthew 8, 17 says, Jesus carried all our sufferings, iniquities, sicknesses. And therefore, you will not be condemned as a transgressor. You will not be condemned as a person who is worthy of death because he carried the death on him. Therefore, you shall live when you come under the cross, when you bow your knees before the name of Jesus and confess that he is the Lord of Lords. You don't have to do anything else. Like how the other religious people, they shave off their heads and they pierce their bodies and yeah, and they will be, you know, they're tying a hook uh, behind their back and they'll be pulling the chariots and all that. Like how, and people walk on fire. You don't have to do anything. Or they climb up the mountains, thousand miles, bare on foot. You don't have to do any of this. Which is difficult, which is easy, you tell me. You don't have to do because Jesus carried all that on him. And you don't have to go to mountains and hills. He lives inside you. And that's the Holy Spirit who comes in my own stature and nature. And who is going to live right inside of you. You don't have to climb anywhere. You don't have to look up to the skies. But you look inside of you. He's there. Just focus on him. And he's going to guide you, help you. And he will give you that understanding of this authority given into your hands. But not without my name. But not without the respect and the honor which I am due. Right? And that's the, uh, you know, that's a basic thing anybody would, would expect, right? If you are the creator of something and that is given that life and breath, you give, you give some object life and breath and that says, oh, I don't care who you are. I don't even know who you are. Yeah? The next day you will take off that breath. <laughs> right? But God doesn't. He gives us multiple chances. Psalm 103, 9 says that, he doesn't strive with the spirit of men forever, neither will he hold his anger. That is contradicting with the Psalm 145, 8 and 9. He say, it says, slow to anger, bound to compassion, all that, which means what? He continues to be very patient, be very loving, be very kind, be very compassionate. But there is a limit. Now, after which he will walk out of your life. And that space, that void, when he walks out of, your, of, out of your life, will be filled with the demons and the evil spirits. They come and possess you. And that's why you will see there is a sudden change in the behavior of a person. Yeah. I've got shocked in seeing such behavior in many people. Sudden change. Why? Because that place gets void. One fine day, you think, oh, like how Samson raised up, saying, ah, still strength is with me. But God left him. The spirit of God left him, Bible says. But this guy didn't know. And what happens? Suddenly, you know, his strength became weakness. People see the change in him. Likewise, you will see that the person who was holy, righteous, blameless, honest, obedient to God, behaving uh, as the agent of the demon. You will see all the wiles of the devil being manifested through his lifestyle and habitual practices. Why? Because he has not understood his authority over the demons. Yeah, in as good as like abusing the freedom given Abusing the grace given for free. You did not shed blood. Jesus died. All right. I think my time is up. I will have to wind this session now. Um, and we are stuck in this authority because I actually have multiple things to walk you through. Um, but I just don't have time to do that. So let's continue. Uh, we will stop here. Um, I hope you had a fair understanding on the Sabbath, which we started, and the uh, astonishing word, why these guys were astonished, various reasons we discussed. And then they also had that question over his authority. And I'm not yet done with this authority. I want to discuss various aspects of authority and being Christians, believers in Christ, and born again believers in Christ. Definitely, we all have to understand that we have been given that authority from above and we got to use that authority and you don't use that authority you do you will you will have to give an account you'll be judged for not using the authority and that's the parable of talent talent the guy who did not use that talent given to him that authority given to him that freedom given to him that free will given to him that liberalized uh, you know your life given to him he'd been delivered redeemed but he does nothing Therefore, where he goes, place of torment, hell, and we will continue to discuss. And now you understand why it's very important. It's, it's the important word in the Bible. Many people don't even think, they think they, they treat it like a military language, authority and government people, authority, be submissive to your authorities. Uh, you know, Paul writes in his epistle, right? 
they think in that way no this authority is different this authority comes to us from above in the name of jesus and we have to discuss more god bless us heavenly father we want to thank you for this wonderful time and opportunity thank you lord we are we feeling so happy privilege that you're able to give us the insight of this authority and today lord may our lives change and may we learn to walk in the authority and the authority through the name of jesus we have got it for free in jesus name we pray him and god bless you subscribe to our channels get access to all our playlist and please share it with your friends relatives and whoever is your you know close nearer dear ones um, may all of them be blessed be an instrument in the hands of god to spread his precious word god bless amen